There's Goudreau. Red Tomahawk 11, Goudreau 13, 33 is Albert Gipp. Archambo, Wyman Archambo. The boys, I asked him about how he pronounces his name, and he said, call me Arbo, but we won't do that. And here is Darrell Eaglestaff, the big center, coached by, of course, Clark Swisher. Fargo North won third place, 63-62 over Langdon. Williston defeated St. Mary's for the consolation championship, 77-61. So we're down to the final 32 minutes. Wearing white, might out high. Mark Luther, number 34, has been introduced. Dave Michelonis out of Tucson, Arizona, at the other guard spot. Here's Doug Ames, a senior, number 44. Junior, number 42, 6'4", and he jumps like 6'10", Stan Trader. And at center, a senior, 6'3", number 42. 6'3", Wayne Whitty. And he's the big hero of the hour. Mr. Clutch of this Minot team, and uh, what a performance against Fargo North last night. It sure was, and uh, like Coach Nick Olson said it about as well as anybody could say it, that he's had uh, many, many athletes here we go. Arthur Link, uh, the governor, uh, you can see him waving up there. Well, threw out the first ball, and uh, Mr. Link has not made himself very. Hey, look at the arm on the gov. Nice throw, governor. There were a uh, few boos in the crowd, and of course, uh, the governor uh, vetoed the 19 year old drinking bill, and I suppose that's what prompted that. I see Governor Bill Guy's up there with him, too. Very good. All right, the two governors are here. Minot gets the tip, and we're underway with the championship game of North Dakota Class A basketball. From the corner, the first shot of the game was taken by Ames, and it goes out of bounds, and it'll be awarded to Minot. We have a standing room only crowd here. We hope you're going to enjoy the game tonight. Minot in white, Fort Yates in blue, or dark on your uh, set if you're watching in black and white. First foul against Trader for bumping into Archambault. So Trader picks up his first foul, and uh, that is not an indication of the way Nick Olson wants this game played. No, and that's exactly the same thing that happened to him last night. He got an un unnecessary foul, and he wound up falling out of the ball game in the fourth period. Yates with the ball. They're in blue. This is Red Tomahawk. Into Goudreau. Ball. Minot has it. Mark Luther, Red Tomahawk on him. This would be a classic matchup between those two. This is Michelonis. This kid can really shoot. Ames, he's going to pop one. He got it. Minot leads 2 0. Minot draws first blood. Red Tomahawk, ball almost stolen. And a matter of fact, it's turned over to Minot. So. I think something interesting to note here is Clark Swisher is not putting the full court pressure on. I think he doesn't want to get any of his key people in foul trouble. Ames just hit another one. So Minot comes out quickly with a four to nothing lead. And the Warriors have it now. Inside, Archambo, double pumps. Foul. Goudreau wrapped his arms around Ames, and that'll be a foul on Goudreau. And things are not going well for Fort Yates at the moment. No, they, they're getting off to a slow start. They need a, they need a quick basket. Minot uh, gets a basket here, and uh, the tempo of the game could be set early. Yates in a press now as Minot brings it down. Over to Trader. 42 is Trader. Archambault on him. Here's Luther. Look at that shot. Right through. Oh, boy. Call the cops. Minot's hot. 6-0. First quarter. The Magicians in white, inside, Archambault loses the ball. Minot has it, Ames. Over to Witte. Inside, Michelona's 15-footer, good! Eight to nothing, Minot. Clark Swisher hasn't moved. He hasn't, and I think what he was trying to do is take it to Archambault, but he's a little bit outsized in there. They may have to change it a little bit. That one was missed by Goudreau. Here comes Minot again. Nicolonis, beautiful layup. Minot is really burning it up right now. Ten to nothing. 
48 wants timeout. 542 to go in the first quarter. Minot 10. Fort Yates nothing. An exclusive Speed Queen First, a super new basketball special for the month of March only. An all-new Speed Queen washer with Speed Queen's exclusive stainless steel tub for only $199.95. Speed Queen stainless steel tub carries a lifetime warranty. Stainless steel helps clothes last 40% longer. Speed Queen is the only washer that carries a 10-year warranty on its automatic transmission. All these Speed Queen exclusive features plus many more for the sensational low price of only $199.95. Now during the month of March, only add Speed Queen's matching stainless steel dryer with durable press cycle for all those important firm press clothes and buy the pair for only $3.59.50. Something else from Speed Queen, Thriftomatic Automatic Water Softener. Saves money on soap, plus helps you have cleaner, brighter, softer clothes. Makes hard water soft. See these exclusive Speed Queen appliances at the following dealers. Speed Queen, distributed by Pat O'Day Incorporated, Fargo. Well, Minot really off to a quick start here, and uh, the Warriors are re trying to regroup here. They put it in play. Fort Yates trailing 10 to nothing, first quarter. Inside, Archambeau, his shot. In and out, no good. And good defensive play by Goudreau, who tied up Wayne Whitty. And they'll jump. Minot got the tip, but uh, Whitty was tied up. Minot in white, 48's in blue. 10-0, Minot. They get the tip. Trader to Michelonis. And the Magicians are red hot. 5.22 to go, first quarter. Michelonis aims from the corner. He got it. Minot hasn't missed. 12 to nothing. Minot just ripping the nets. Boy, and this is the way that one last year started out, and uh, Poirier's going to have to regroup right now and get, get a quick basket. Albert Kipp didn't get it. And a foul called underneath on Wayne Whitty. There he is. A little bumping in the melee underneath the bucket. That's a second team foul on Minot. Fort Yates will put it in play underneath the bucket. Eagle Staff will inbound the ball. Goudreau shot. No good. Fort Yates controls the ball. Goudreau bounced off somebody's foot down there. Red Tomahawk, number 11. Clever little guy. Inside, Archambo. Foul. Three seconds against Fort Yates. And when you're hot, you're hot. And when you're not, you're not. Yeah, they have 48 needs a basket real bad. And they've had three turnovers and, and nothing going in. So they're going to have to get something pretty quick. All Minot right now. And the Magicians have the ball. Woody shot off the glass. Rebound Trader. Two more for Minot. Trader makes it 14 to nothing. The Magicians look like they're going to run away with this right now. But there's a lot of time left. But Fort Yates has to get something, as Tommy's pointed out. Red Tomahawk. Over here, Goudreau. Goudreau's shot. It's up. It's good. Fort Yates has finally broken the ice with their first bucket. Goudreau scores. I think of all the teams in the tournament, uh, Fort Yates is, is able to keep their cool pretty well. This is Minot's Witty now. To Ames. Michelonis, number 12. Doug Ames. 14-2, Minot, first quarter. 3.55 on the clock. Beautiful feed. Trader, two. Minot looking like a million dollars right now. 16 to two. 14 point lead for the Magi. Here's Gip. Foul against Archambo. Archambo pushing off underneath. That's his first. And Fort Gates in a full court press now. Are trailing by 14 points with 3.36 to go in the first quarter. Here goes Luther for the bucket. Nope. 48 gets the ball. That was a bad shot. He got too far underneath the bucket and tried to roll it up dipsy doo style and didn't do it. Gip. Goudreau. 15 footer. Good. Well, 
Roger Goudreau is trying to keep Fort Yates in it, and he's so far, uh, there. hey, a steal by Red Tomahawk of Fort Yates. Foul on Luther. First mistake Minot's made. Yeah, it is, and uh, that's an unnecessary mistake. Minot with a 12-point lead, uh, they don't need that pressure quite that far out front. They should sit back and uh, make Fort Yates shoot the 15-foot the, the jumper. All right, Yates with the ball in blue. Trailing by 12, Goudreau, Eagle Staff, good. Here come the Yates boys, 16 to six. They've cut it to 10 points now. Minot's trader with it, 42. Offensive foul. He slid right into him, a good call. A excellent call by Dale Moog. He put that left elbow out and shoved Goodrow right on his fanny. Timeout, Minot, score. Minot high, 16, Fort Yates, six. We'll be right back. <laughs> The officials tonight in this championship game, Al Lick and Dale Maug, both from Bismarck and both doing an excellent job. This is a lot of pressure on the officials, too, a game like this. Uh, believe me, it's pretty tough. Yeah, and I don't think they decide who's going to work the, the final game until uh, right before uh, right before the semifinal round on Saturday, uh, Sunday. Sunday? <laughs> All right, Archambault. His shot up in the air, off the glass. Eagle Staff rebounds, good! And boy, Ford Yates has really come back with a lot of poise. They're only eight down now. Minot with it. Full court press by Fort Yates. Here's Minot. Luther feeds underneath to everybody. And first down, 10 goes out of bounds. They'll give it to Minot. It went off Goudreau. Good shot down there. Of the scramble underneath. Now Ames will inbound the ball for Minot. They lead by eight. 16 to eight. Michelonis. Rebound Fort Yates. Foul on Ames. His first. Big Doug. So the bonus is on quickly for Fort Yates, and uh, suddenly, after being behind 12 to nothing, it's 16 to 8 and maybe more. Interesting to know, Minot would jumped out to that quick lead. Uh, already, Fort Yates is in the bonus situation. And it's 16 to 9. Fort Yates has come back with a rush as Eagle Staff scores for the line his fifth point. 2.14 to go in the first quarter. Rebound Minot's Witty to Michelonis. The Tucson kid. Transferred up to Minot this past year. He's been a great addition to that club. Here's Luther, 15 footer. Watch it. Nope. Rebound Goudreau. Good position on the board. 157 to go. Fort Yates with the ball. They've closed up the gap inside. Archambault loses it. Minot gets it. I don't think they can go that way against Minot. No, I don't either. He's got, either he's got to go up with it right now. He's not going to get Witty off his feet that easy. Minot's Michelonis from 20. Rebound. Ames in the lane. Eagle Staff gets the ball. This is Walks now. He, he scores. Basket counts. I think who's the foul on basket counts he'll get a foul he got everything that time walks gets a foul walks gets a basket and in our pregame interview Swisher Clark Swisher said this is my guy when I need some help he knows one thing to go to the bucket now he's kind of the, like he said the goal man go in and uh, get somebody fired up oh hit the referee it hit the referee oh, that, a great call Clark Swisher was up. A great steal by Fort Yates. The ball bounced off Al Lick's leg, went out of bounds. They got to give it to Fort Yates. Minute 18 to go. The Yates kids are five down. What a comeback. First quarter. Here's Eagle Staff. Fouled by Witte. Oh, I tell you, this game has really turned around. You know, uh, Fort Yates got Minot to do just what Minot did not want to do. Minot had a 12, 14 point lead and Fort Yates came out and they're pressing now. They're kind of helter skelter again. Yeah. Fort Yates has helped to disorganize Minot as Eagle Staff's free throw is good. Great comment tonight by uh, Swisher said uh, sometimes Eagle Staff's a slow starter. We should play him a quarter in the locker room <laughs> and then he's ready. He got that one too. Fort Yates, would you believe, is only three down after being 12 down? And we're in the first quarter of what's going to be a wild game, I have the feeling. A minute eight to go. 
steal by Archambo of uh, Fort Yates. And the Warriors are really sizzling. Here's Eagle Staff. Beautiful stop by Trader. Walks has the ball. Walks underneath. Great feed. Tap. No good. Rebound Woody. Clears it out to Michelonis. The Magi on the move now. Minot with the ball. Luther for the bucket. Rebound. Fort Yates. Ball is kicked all the way down to midcourts like Here a pier six. Go. YMCA basketball Saturday night. 33 seconds ago here in the first quarter. This is Luther, shot from the corner. Right back, stolen by Fort Yates. And the Warriors have it. This is Walks. Does he like to go for the bucket? Minot gets it 12 seconds ago. Here's Luther, the layup. Good! Eighteen thirteen. Look at Trader get that rebound at the buzzer. Okay, gang, that's the end of a frantic first quarter. The score: Minot eighteen and forty-eight thirteen. Hey, farmer, through the Milk Producers Association of North Dakota. Eighteen thirteen and a wild, frantic first uh, quarter. Minot leading by five. Shot by Michelonis, rebound by Ames, and a foul call against Walks, I think. And Walks gets his second foul. Gee, the way Minot started out, looked like they were going to win it by uh, 9.30. But uh, Fort Yates has come back well. Luther in for the bucket to Ames. Two for Ames. Eight points for Doug Ames, and Minot's built the lead up to seven again. Earl Red Tomahawk, he's clever. In the center, Eagle Staff, good! Beautiful turn shot by big Darrell Eagle Staff. 2015, Minot by five, the Magicians in white, they have the ball. Bring it down nice against the press. Looked like over and back in the center, but the referees did not call it. Minot still controls, this is Michelonis. Triggers run from 18, short. Rebound, walks, Fort Yates. Archambeau loses the ball, walks. Lost it out of bounds, was tacked by Trader. He said no. Eagle Staff will toss it in now. Inbounds play, Goudreau from the corner, short. Rebound, Minot, Witte, Luther. <laughs> Luther underneath, Trader, oh, he missed it. Trader missed a, a grape, as they call it, a sucker shot underneath, tough shot, 2015 Minot. That was a tough shot, and I think he thought he had a, he hit the bottom of the rim going up. Archambeau, good! Archambeau, his first two-pointer, 2017. Fort Gates has come back the long way. Minot by three, they have the ball. Minot and White, whoops. This is Michelonis. Luther, he walked with it, won't count. He took the extra step. Took that extra step and that turnover cost him a bucket. 6-12 to go in a quarter. All of a sudden, Quiet Clark is up and down and up and down now. Michelonis with a great steal and Red Tomahawk got him on the arm trying to get it back. This Red Tomahawk is uh, first personal. And there's Luther and Trader talking to their coach. Michelonis will get a foul throw. Hope you're enjoying it along the KX line tonight. Remember, this is where you'll see the state class B basketball tournament, Minnesota Twins baseball this summer. Nicolonis didn't get it. 48 brings it down. Six minutes to go and a half. The Warriors down three. They were down 12 at one time. Archambo and didn't get that one. Who wants the rebound? I tell you that Woody with a bad leg is certainly playing some basketball. Oh, he sure is, and he's really a smooth, fluid-looking ball player. Michelonis, Luther pumps, looks good. 
is it? Archambo gets it. He told me last night, if you get fouled up on my name, just call me Arbo. <laughs> yeah, great kid. Goudreau, 18-footer. Rebound, Minot's Doug Ames. Clears it off to Witte. Witte to Luther. Luther lost it. Archambo. Goudreau. Look out. Here come the Warriors. Goudreau scores this 20 to 19, and Fort Gates has come all the way back. What a rally here. Luther. Michelonis. It is good. Michelonis just let that one flop off. He's got a nice soft shot. 22 19, why not by three? Only the second quarter, folks. Goudreau. That looks good. Nope. Our Shambo rebounds out in front. Red Tomahawk didn't get it. Rebound. Goudreau. Boy, is he tough. Goudreau for Fort Yates makes it 22 21. Why not with the lead in the basketball and having some problems? Against the press. Here comes Michelonis. I'm impressed with this young man. Why not in white? Michelonis with it. 34, Luther, corner aims, tough shot, didn't get it. Trader rebounds, Witty has it. Witty, beautiful. Wayne Witty gets his first points of the game, and it's 24 21, Minot by three. Underneath is Eagle Staff. Foul, Trader, that's three. Boy, that's going to hurt Minot. That's a tough break for Minot. Uh, and we have a timeout coming. 48 wants, uh, Minot wants timeout. I don't know who wants timeout, but anyway, we got it. Okay, there's Dale Maug, and we just have received word from uh, Chuck Lehman that they've established a new attendance record and new gate receipts. Over 30,000 have seen this tournament in three days. 24-21, Minot. In a little bit of trouble here now with Trader, their good leaper, with just with three fouls on him, and two shots coming to Daryl Eagle Staff of Fort Yates. He didn't get the first one. There's a good shot. I like this shot down the line. Mike Shippers lost at least 10 pounds moving that camera around. Eagle Staff got this one. He has 10 points, and it's a two-point lead for Minot. They have the ball. They're in white. Mark Luther. Michelonis. He going to set one from 18. Didn't get it. Trader rebounds, loses it, goes out of bounds. They'll give it to Minot. And Gary Cedarstrom comes Gary into the ball game. The game and Trader goes out. A lot of pressure on his Cedarstrom. He's just a sophomore, I think, or a junior. Uh, I'm not sure. I think he's a senior, Jim. Oh, how about that? Check it out. Anyway, Michelonis fires from the corner. Didn't get it. Rebound, Witty. His shot. Nope. And Eagle Staff, no, it was Goudreau that comes off for the ball. To Red Tomahawk, he's their quarterback. 3.15 to go in the second quarter. Eagle Staff, turn shot, good! Hey folks, the game is tied up. Would you believe, what a rally for Fort Yates. Fantastic comeback. Might not look like they're gonna blow him right out of the gym. Cedarstrom loses the ball. Cedarstrom is a senior. Nice going, Jim. <laughs> Berryman is the kid that I'm thinking is a sophomore. Now we're even, because I fumbled the pom-poms, remember? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been a long three days. Here's Cedarstrom. Shot is no good. Minot has taken some bad shots now. And here comes Fort Yates down for the go-ahead bucket. Would you believe this Fort Yates team was down 12 to nothing? Well, they tied it up now. Goudreau, Archambo. There's Walks. Fort Yates is ahead. Fort Yates has gone out in front of Minot, 26-24. There was consternation and shock when Fort Yates beat Bismarck. Michelonis from 20, short. Rebound, Ames. Tough luck, in and out. Fort Yates will get the ball. They shock Bismarck, they shock Langdon. How about Wapiton? Throw them in and now they're giving Minot all they want. 
Fantastic story of the four Yates Warriors. Here's Walks. Foul on Ames. His second. Two oh six to go in the half of the championship game of Class A basketball. We hope you're enjoying it in color from the Bismarck Civic Center. Well, gang, Walks has uh, five points. Fort Yates leads by three. Still three. Witty to Ames. Minot brings it down. Michelonis. 27-24. Minot shooting has really tailed off. Boy, they couldn't miss the first quarter. Luther from 25. Get it! Well, that's what Minot needs, I think, uh, to get a little confidence. They sure do. And uh, Mark Luther is not afraid to take that shot. A good shooter from that corner. He gets a sore arm after every game, but uh, they pack it in ice, but he can shoot. Minot steals again. Nicolonis, the layup. Okay, Minot is back in the ball game, girls. 28-27, Minot has the lead over Fort Yates. So what a contest this has turned out to be. Minute 24, second quarter. That's all that's left. Goodrow fouled on the arm by Luther. His first. LG comes in. Michelonis goes out. Mike LG. And there's Luther. At the line is Goodrow. He get two shots. Williston won the consolation. Fargo North got third place. And we have a great treat for you coming up at halftime. Uh, Tommy likes this show. <laughs> the Woodmancy Wiggle, the Bismarck Demonettes. All right, give Goudreau a foul throw here. He's got seven points. Fort Yates has tied it up. We're at the third tie of the game. And Minot looking for the go ahead shot. It's LG, short. Rebound Luther. He's on the wing now, the other side. Tried to throw it inside to Ames and missed him. There again, uh, happened before. LG just into the ball game, maybe a couple of times up and down the floor and then shoot. Not, not right away. You're not quite loose yet. One of the Fargo North boys did that. Uh, Greg Saul fired real quick and missed everything. Here's Goudreau feeding under Eagle Staff. Tip is no good. Goudreau rebounds. Walks. Got it. I tell you what, uh, this walks is uh, some kind of reserve. He comes off the bench, and he's the guy that's pulled Fort Yates into a 30 to 28 lead. One of the responsible ones. He and Goudreau. Fort Yates leading by two. 34 seconds ago, Luther pumps from the corner and hits it. Tied up. Mark Luther zips one in from the corner. It's 30 30 at halftime almost. 23 seconds to go. Walks. He got it. <laughs> Not too fancy style, but all he does is score. Here comes Minot, 32-30. The Magicians are down two. They led 12 to nothing once. LG underneath, Ames didn't get it, but was fouled by Goudreau. That was a nice feed by LG, right underneath the Ames, almost a three-point play. Okay. Ames will get two. LG really whipped the ball into him along the baseline. And Doug Ames at the line now for his first of two free throws. He got it. Nine points for Ames. 32-31, Fort Yates. This is Doug Ames. Nebraska's interested in him, among others, for football. He got that one, too, and it's tied up again. Seven seconds to go. 32-32. Red Tomahawk fires from the corner. Didn't get it. Rebound. Too late. Will not count. Walks got it. Didn't count. And guess what? We're tied up. <laughs> Marvelous first half of basketball from the Class A Finals at Bismarck's Great Civic Center. The uh, guest area, uh, Lieutenant Governor Wayne Sandstead of North Dakota. It seems a little hard to believe when Minot was had a 12-point lead. Uh, an amazing comeback from Fort for Fort Yates as we as you if you were with us from the beginning. Minot just went out and almost blew them back to the Fort Yates the way they were playing. All right, Minot gets the tip. They're in white. We start the second half. 60 more minutes of basketball. We'll have a champion decided here in Class A basketball in North Dakota. Minot's Luther inside to Ames. Oh, he missed a setup. Trader rebounds. Still has it. Nicolonis from 18. He'd been short all night. Rebounds. Short again. 
And he stole the ball away from Goudreau, excuse me, from Walks, and they'll jump it. Kenny Walks, who has really been tough since he's been in the ball game. He sure has, and I think he replaced Al Albert Gipp, and uh, Gipp hasn't started the second half. Red Tomahawk, Archambo, layup. There's two for Fort Yates. Boy, he really hit him on the fly. Beautiful fast break. That's the way that fast break's supposed to go. Run and gun. Do I love that kind of basketball? 34-32, Yates. Minots, Luther, feeds intended for Trader. No, no, didn't go. And it used to be the day that the Yates kids were the run and gun guys of North Dakota. Not anymore, they're a little more deliberate. They sure are, and of course they had a couple of big boys in there at the time too. Lucan's Eagle Staff, some of those people. And from the corner, Michelonis drills one. Tied up again, 34-34. 7.04 to go in the third quarter. Kenny walks, 35. Underneath the Eagle staff. Whoops. Three second violation against Goudreau. Now Fort Yates, he's in that lane too long. Turns it over to Minot. Here comes Michelonis now. Half court trap a little bit. A uh, little pressure put out by Fort Yates. Minot and White. We're tied at 34. Third quarter, Luther from 18. Trader rebounds. Oh, nice play. He really went up and got that one. That's what he's going to have to do. He's got three fouls on him, too. Six points and three fouls for Trader. Four gates down two now. Goudreau from the side. And they'll give it to Four Gates under the bucket. Eagle Staff will throw it in. 36 34. Why not? Goudreau from 10. Rebound, Eagle Staff. Darrell Eagle Staff, like his big brother, really working hard on the boards. Foul on Red Tomahawk. Best Sandlot player uh, that Swisher's ever coached, he said. Got him right off the schoolyard with the cement, and he's too <laughs> much. 36 apiece. Minot with the ball. Third quarter. Trader from 10. Got it. Hey, Big Stan Trader's starting to be a factor in this ballgame. He sure is. He got eight points. I think they shut him out last night, didn't they? 38-36, Minot. Fort Yates with the ball. Archambo in the lane, way short. Eagle Staff rebounds. He got it. Tied up again. They're trading buckets the way this is going. The clock will decide who wins it. Fort Yates and Minot really hooked up in one. We're tied 38 in the third quarter. Michelonis from 18. He got it. He just had to increase that uh, wind gauge a little bit, yeah. <laughs> He'd been short all night, but he got that one. 40-38, why not? Archambo from 15. Good! 40-40. Boy, the percentages are increasing here. These two teams really gunning at each other. Fort Yates, why not? Tied at 40, third quarter. Luther for why not? Michelonis. Short again, and Red Tomahawk gets the rebound. Witte has been boxed out off the board. They're really doing a good job on him. Here's Walks for the bucket, and Trader slapped it away from him. You know, this is the first time, even though these two teams are in the West, this is the first time they played each other this year. That is amazing, but that's the way it goes. I asked uh, Nick Olson, he said they're scary. They really got a good club. Here's Luther. Look at that shot. Didn't get it. Trader did. Oh, the rebound is, is ferocious underneath there. Why not? Gets the ball. And the 48s fans didn't like it. Big Doug Ames will trigger it in. 40-40 tie. Third quarter. Minot and Fort Yates. Minot's Trader. Shot. Good. Trader is really hot. He's at three in a row. 42-40, Minot by two. Eagle Staff, he got it right back. He's having some kind of a game. He's got 18 points. Here's Michelonis now for Minot. Ames, Trader, Michelonis, Luther. Luther fed off to Witte. They're really jumping in on Witte. Now Michelonis, 18 feet. Nope. 
Witty rebound. There's Witty. He got it. Oh, what a move from the right hand to the left hand, the layup. I think that's only the second time he's touched the ball all night. Fourth point for Witty, and that's amazing. 44 42, my not. Three and a half to go in the third quarter. Fort Gates with it. Kenny walks inside to Eagle Staff. Goudreau inside. No. Foul. Witty. Why not? His second. There's uh, Wayne Witty right there. I'll take it out of bounds because uh, it's called a common foul. I heard that today. Till they get the. Here's Goudreau from the corner. Rebound Witty. And he really wanted that basketball. Why not by two and they have the ball. Now that four Yates is back in it. They've kind of backed off a little bit on the pressure. They're just bothering him now. Luther to Witty. Witty inside. Ooh, collision at the pass. Witty gets the foul. His third. Witty and Trader of Minot each have three fouls and Nichols and stands up a minute. Ward Yates brings it down. This is Red Tomahawk. Yates down two. Walks inside, loses the ball. Red Tomahawk, watch this one. Whoops. Rebound, walks. He got it. Tied up again, 44. 250 go, third quarter. Minot in white, Fort Yates in blue. That was partially blocked. Witty inside, blocked again, that time by Eagle Staff. Boy, the staff is really playing some kind of a game tonight for Fort Yates. Boy, he sure is. He's taking that jump shot from the top of the key, blocking shots and rebounding real well. Back out in front, Mark Luther fires 18 feet and hits it. <laughs> Kid can shoot. 46 44. Minot by two. 225 to go in the third quarter. Goudreau. He scores for, for Fort Yates. We're tied at 46. And Minot wants a timeout with 215 to go here in the third quarter. The score Fort Yates 46. Minot 46. You want to go, you can help Dairy Products Commission. Well, we got about 10 minutes left of the basketball game here, and uh, we're tied. I always use the line, Haywood Hale Bruins said, give each team 100 points and let them play for five minutes. <laughs> but I think you got to do more than that. But we're tied right now. It's about a 10-minute game. Michelonis from Minot, going to fire one. He got that one. He's been having a tough night, but he's got uh, 14 points. Fort Yates is giving him that shot, too. They dropped way in on Witty and Trader, so. Uh... Witty steals it. Here's Mr. Super Clutch. And Minot has jumped off to a four point lead, the biggest lead either team has had in uh, about a quarter and a half. Red Tomahawk. Here goes Walks for the bucket. Archambault. <coughs> We have a violation against Fort Yates. You know, but it keeps up like this, like some guy said in a little one ball game, if they had to charge us another dollar to get out of this place. 50-46, <laughs> Minot leading, and we have a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. Minot with the basketball. Aaron White. Magicians won it in 1971. Ames hit it. Minot's hot again. They're ahead by six. 52 46. Minute 10 to go in the third quarter. And Fort Yates can't buy one at the moment. Archambo was fouled. Doug Ames gets his third. Trader, Ames, and Witty all have three fouls. Fort Yates for the night. Six fouls on the whole game. That's, that shows you what kind of it's a championship game, and uh, the fouls are held to a minimum usually in a game like this. There's a referee's shirt. Free throw by Archambo is no good. That hurts a little bit. Yates needs a couple of points here. He got that one. They haven't had many points from him, and their press is still on. The pressure on Minot. 
with a minute to go. Minot leading by five. 52-47. Michelonis. He uh, didn't do anything with it for five seconds, so they have a jump ball. You got to get rid of the ball. You can't just, uh, that prevents the stalling. So we'll have a jump ball at center court. 50 seconds ago in the third quarter. 52-47 Minot. And Minot's Doug Ames will get it. Oh, he's a big, good-looking kid. Ames to Michelonis. Michelonis, Luther. Michelonis. Rebound, Eagle Staff of Fort Yates with 30 seconds to go in a quarter. Yates down five. Red Tomahawk with it. Back out in front, Red Tomahawk. Goudreau pops one. Short. Minot gets the rebound. 14 seconds to go. Here comes the Magi. Broken up by Arshambo. Long pass to Walks. He can't stop it. Minot will get it. Three seconds ago. Three seconds. Boys are a little tired, I think. Let's see how Minot does it. Luther. Goudreau. Wouldn't that have been something? He threw it right at Goudreau, and that's the end of the third quarter. Would have been something if Goudreau had pitched it in from there. 52-47, Minot. Tournament, what's your guess, Thomas? Well, I think you just said it. I don't believe Four Yates is done, and we're going to have some yelling and screaming before that final buzzer goes off. Dale Mog will throw in the air, and Minot gets the tip. Whitty has been out jumping Eagle Staff on the center jump. Here's Michelonis now for Minot. See how they play it. They're ahead by five. Ames takes the shot. He got it. Boy, Doug Ames has had some kind of a game. That's his 14th point. Minot with a seven-point lead now. Their biggest since the early moments of the game. Walks. Goudreau, hold it. Three-second violation by Eagle Staff. He's in that lane too long, and you can't be there for more than three seconds when your team has the ball. You can be outside of it or in the top half of the circle. And Minot moves it down, leading by seven. Two more here would really hurt. Ford Yates, Michelonis, he got it! Davey Michelonis fires one from 18. He's got 16 points, and he, all of them from long range. That's what uh, Minot had to do. They're giving him those shots, so if he wasn't hitting, it'd be a different ballgame. Archambo got one back. Nine points for him, and it's 56-49. Minot with the lead. Michelonis to Luther. I'm waiting for the Warriors to really put the press on. Minot's Michelonis to Ames. Here's Luther on inside to Trader. Double clutch, and he got it. 12 points for Trader, his biggest production of the tournament, I think. And it, since he started scoring, you notice he hasn't picked up any more fouls. It changed his whole attitude, I think, about the ballgame. Walking violation against Fort Yates. And Clark Swisher wants a timeout. Oh, he don't go, yeah, he's going to get it. 6.35 to go in the game. Timeout, Ford Yates. Why not? 58, Ford Yates, 49. In this day of specialization, it is more and more evident that the doctor of chiropractic is becoming accepted as the primary physician for the diagnosis and treatment of disease and injury of the spine. He is specifically educated and trained in the body mechanics and function of the spine and its relationships to total body health. He is concerned with the treatment of spinal malfunction instead of merely palliating warning symptoms. Chiropractic is a health-promoting profession. Due to public interest, it is necessary to mention that Medicare coverage of chiropractic care for older Americans is not effective until July of 1973. However, other insurance coverages of chiropractic care continue to be as broad as for any other health care. The North Dakota Chiropractic Association reminds you that regular exercise, good posture habits, and approaching any new season activities with due caution may prevent strains, sprains, and muscular soreness. This message has been presented in the public interest by the North Dakota Chiropractic Association. 
Well, we just had a cheering battle between the Minot students and their parents, and then the Minot students and 48 students. It's been really exciting and very cleverly done. Six and a half minutes ago in the old ball game, and Minot with a nine point bulge here and controlling the basketball. So we can wait here and see if the Yates Warriors pull another comeback. Minot's Michelonis way out to Ames. 6.19 to go in the game. This is Luther. Michelonis, the game has really slowed down. Trader going to pop one. He didn't get it. And Eagle Staff gets the rebound. Now they'll second guess that shot, I think, by Trader, but uh, he's been pretty good with the hands lately, and uh, they may have said, okay, take it. Goudreau. This is Archambo. His long range shot is no good. Rebound, Minots, Doug Ames. Michelonis. Minot controls with a nine point lead, 540 to go in the game. Magicians have played this very smart. Heady basketball. They're taking the deliberate shot now. They're just going to sit on it and take the good shot. We know what happens this sometimes. It lose, you lose your momentum a little bit. You sure do, but I think they're, yeah, they're going to take that good shot if they get it. They got it right there, Doug Ames. 16 points, 11 point lead for the Minot Magicians now. The biggest lead of the night, Eagle Staff. He got it. Foul on Trader, his fourth. Eagle Staff gets the basket and he'll get one shot. So now, with five minutes and nine seconds to go, Eagle Staff could close it to eight. Trader is going to have to play a little cautious because he has one foul left. Eagle Staff gets his 19th point, his first one this quarter, 60 52. Now Fort Yates in the zone press. Here's Trader. Underneath the Witty. Great save by Archambo. Uh, Trader shot. And Fort Yates gets the ball. Red Tomahawk, 4.50 to go in the game. Yates with the ball, they're down eight. Red Tomahawk. Archambo. Rebound, Goudreau. Walks. And Minot gets the rebound. Three shots for the Fort Yates Warriors. They couldn't convert any of them. That's tough, but that's the game. Minot controls now. Doug Ames. Goudreau slaps it away. We have a substitution. 33 into the ball game for Fort Yates. Gary Little Dog. Little Dog, 33, uh, with the quickness of... No, that's Albert Gipp, excuse me. Gipp came back in. First time we've seen him since the first quarter. Luther pumps from 20. Got it! Oh! He got it. He got a foul. Nick Olson wanted a timeout and almost collapsed. We have a timeout here with 3.58 to go in the game. Minot 62 and 48 52. And you know, honey, I was talking to Joan, and she said she just finally told Ed, look, it's halfway through winter, and we still haven't set up our line of credit. She said, why, well, I'll bet your husband has the credit all lined up by now, hasn't he? And I said, oh, I'm sure he has. <laughs> Remember last year, you said you'd never wait until the last minute again. Honey, who are you calling? BCA. BCA. Plan your credit insurance early this year. Call your Production Credit Association office in Mandan. Tomorrow wouldn't be too soon. Report, Agrifax. It can shed a lot of light on your farm without burning any midnight oil. Go PCA, PCA. Plan your credit insurance early this year. Call your local Production Credit Association office in Fargo. Tomorrow wouldn't be too soon.
Three minutes and 58 seconds to go. Minot suddenly is leading by 10, and some of the less hardy fans are beginning to leave, including some from Fort Yates. That surprises me. Yeah, I think uh, they're giving up a little bit too quick. There's still four minutes and uh, only uh, 10 points difference. Luther's free throw is no good. Trader rebounds and is hammered in the lane by Goudreau. Oh, Goudreau really got him. That last foul was on Albert Gipp. 62-52, the 1973 Class A All-Tournament team has been uh, announced. Trader's free throw, good. Trader now has 13 points. It's the best he's played this whole tournament, I think. He's played with four fouls, too. 63-52, short. Rebound, Archambo. Uh, 48s. Red Tomahawk with it. In the center, Eagle Staff, double pumps. Got it. Oh, boy, what a game he's had. 21 points for Eagle Staff, 63-54. Might not against the press. Luther rifles one to Ames. Might not with the ball. They lead by 11. How about nine? I can't even count at this stage. Michelonis. Oh! From the locker room. It's interesting to note, uh, Nick Olson hasn't changed his game plan. He's still letting the kids take the shots. He's been taking the whole ball game. Archambo is missing a shoe, and uh, now he's ready. Little dog. Look at that. Eagle Staff gets another one. Little dog's on the bench. And Big Mouth at the mic. 65-56. <laughs> Might out with the ball in the lead. Ford Yates trying desperately to get back into it with 2.49 to go. But the clock is against him now as Minot goes into a controlled game. Minot moving closer toward another title. Trader, Michelonis. Too far under. And we'll have a jump ball. Two and a half minutes to go in the game with Minot 65 and 48 56. The Magicians pulled it out uh, about the middle of the fourth quarter. They really bust loose, busted yeah, loose. They did, and that, that three point play by Trader uh, made a difference. I, I don't believe it was Trader uh, Ames was the one who had yeah. a jump shot. All right, Trader at Eagle Staff will jump. Minot gets it. I tell you, Ames has had a great game. Ames and Trader have been the difference tonight. I think they've taken the pressure off Witty. Michelonis. Foul on Archambo. Number 25 comes in for Fort Yates now. Tony Bob. And we'll have it tossed in because they haven't reached the five foul, five team foul mark yet. Minot still controlling with 2.17 to go. Minot ahead, 65 56. Nine point lead for the Magicians. Nick Olson on his way to another one. Minot won it, you'll recall, over Jamestown in 1971, right here. Ames. Ball is stolen by. Red Tomahawk, Eagle Staff, all the way down to shoot for two. 65-58, seven-point lead for Minot. Ball stolen. Red Tomahawk gets one. Don't go away. Here come the Warriors. 65-60, they've cut it to five. <laughs> Unbelievable. Long pass down here. They got two on one. Witte, Trader, layup. No good, but a foul. Tony Bob. Tony Bob nailed him. His first foul. Well, I tell you what, these Yates kids don't give up. Fantastic performance. They came back from 12 down, 12 zip in the first quarter to tie it at halftime. Both teams traded baskets till early in the fourth quarter when Minot sharpshooting by Ames, Michelonis, and Luther busted it wide open. And Trader. Trader has been sensational tonight for Minot. 14 points. He's been playing with four fouls the last four minutes. Minot controls it. Great play by Luther. The Michelonis, 122 to go. Minot leads by six. Michelonis, 66 to 60. 48 pressing all. Here goes Michelonis down the shoot. Didn't get it. Trader rebounds. Oh, boy! 
by Stanley Trader, the hero of the hour for Minot. And the Magicians lead by eight with 104 to go. 48's travel, don't count, that won't count. Too bad, but Goudreau took that extra step. 68 to 60, Minot leading by eight. 48 pressing all over the place. We'll give you the all-tournament team later on. Oh, Trader whipped it into the crowd. 54 seconds to go. What a ball game we've seen tonight. A gallant band of young men from Fort Yates have really played well against a tough Minot team. Brad Tomahawk, rebound, hold it. Foul for Trader, and he'll be asked to leave, and what a game. Listen to the applause for this young man, Stan Trader. Standing ovation for the Minot fans. Trader really played well tonight. Stan Trader fouled out with 16 points. Great effort. He's a junior. We'll see him again next year. And he didn't make the all-tournament team, in case you're interested. But this was his best game. I'll give him honorable mention. Free throw is good by Archambo. Wyman. Next one is good. Wyman hits two and it's 68-62 with 42 seconds to go in the contest. Minot is ball stolen. Tony Bob, he got it. It's 68-64, four-point lead for Minot with 33 seconds to go. Witte, double team, loses the ball. Yates has it. Red Tomahawk got it. They're two points down. 68-66, 23 seconds to go. Minot with the ball. Holy mackerel, don't go away. Fort Yates has come back fantastically here. This crowd is on its feet. We have a foul on Goudreau. Fourteen seconds to go, and suddenly Fort Yates from nine points is just two points away from tying this game up. Katie, fire the door. Mother, get the throat spray. At the line with a lot of pressure. Two shots. Mark Luther. He missed the first one. Fourteen seconds left to go. This crowd is on its feet. Here's Luther again. He didn't get it. Fort Yates threw it away almost. No, they caught and we have a timeout with 12 seconds to go. We'll keep it here. We'll keep it here, baby. Nobody leaves. Don't go away. We've got it right here. And I'll tell you what, this crowd was kind of settling back saying, well, Minot is gonna win another one. And they kind of ho-hummed a little bit. And all of a sudden, with about 40 seconds ago, Fort Yates scored it, a couple in a row. And they narrowed it down to four. Then they got two more. And it's 68-66. Mark Luther at the line had a chance of, to really sew it up. And now Fort Yates has the ball with 11 seconds to go. And we have people lined up all over the place. There's the Fort Yates huddle. No, you can't beat fun at the old ball game, folks. And this has been a fantastic tournament because it's so reminiscent of 1971 when Minot, we had, I think we televised seven games and six of them were decided by two points. It's been almost that way here. And in our third and fourth place game tonight, Fargo North won by two over Langdon. Well, here we go, the last 11 seconds. Hold on to your hats. They use the old cliche. Bob will inbound the ball for Fort Yates. The Red Tomahawk, 10 seconds. Red Tomahawk still with it, nine. Tony Bob has it, six. Jump ball. Jump ball with three seconds to go. But Yates still has a chance. Three seconds to go, Minot defense closed in on Goudreau and he'll have to jump it with Luther. Now, Whitty wanted to talk to Al Lick about something. 
little consultation down there asking a question. We have three seconds to go. Minot leads by two for the championship. Minot gets it. And somebody got in the circle too long. Two seconds to go. And Fort Yates will take it. We'll have the possession of the ball and they call a timeout. We'll stay right here. We'll stay right here. Talk about your excitement. I don't know. Uh, a very good friend of mine, kid named Jim Antonopoulos, said anytime Adelson gets next to a television game, it's overtime. We had that in the hockey championship when it looked like Grand Fork Central would just roll over Grafton a couple of weeks ago, and you know the story there. Mighty little Grafton just played its heart out and won the hearts of everybody with a tremendous double overtime battle against Grand Forks before uh, Roy Nystrom's uh, great young bunch won it. It's good! Would you believe? A miracle! A miracle! Minutes ago. Why not? In white. What a fantastic finish to this tournament. Why not? Luther's shot. Rebound, Tony Bob. Fort Yates has it. And this ballpark is erupting. 2.18 to go in the overtime. Fort Yates, Brent Tomahawk. Goudreau fires, hit, in and out. Rebound, Wayne Whitty. We're in overtime in case you went away from the set for a sandwich. And Nick Olson wants a timeout. We'll be right back. 68, 68 overtime. We'll be right back. Wherever it is that you want to go, you can help yourself. Whatever it is that you want to be, you can help yourself. Help yourself. Whatever it is that you want to do, you can get right in and help yourself. Help yourself. The great A way. You know, whatever you want to be, you can help yourself by drinking milk. Like every time you down a refreshing glass of milk, you're helping yourself grow. You see, your body's renewing three billion cells every minute, and milk's a bodybuilding package no other single food can match. It's a drink that helps you grow and be what you want to be. So help yourself. Drink milk. Whatever it is that you want to do, you can get right in and help yourself. Help yourself. This message has been brought to you by your local dairy farmer through the North Dakota Dairy Products Commission. Well, 2.04 to go in the overtime, and we're tied. Minot has the ball. Nick Olson wanted to talk to his young men, and we'll see what happens here. Overtime, 68-68. In the center, the shot by Cedarstrom is good. Gary Cedarstrom has scored. He's in, of course. Traders out. Cedarstrom's in there. Fort Yates now. Feed to Tony Bob. No good. Tap, no good. Rebound, why not? Ball stolen by Goudreau. Goudreau, Archambo. Good! He was fouled by Whitty. Fort Yates is ahead. Not yet. They're tied. Excuse me. Fort Yates has tied it up. The excitement of this game is carrying me away. Whitty gets his fourth foul. So now our Shambo at the line with a foul throw that could put Yates in the lead. He didn't do it. We're still tied. Jump ball. <laughs> this unbelievable finish to a tremendous basketball season in Class A basketball. Whoever thought Fort Yates would be here in the first place? They had to play Bismarck and they dumped Bismarck and beat Wapiton and Langdon. Fort Yates has the ball with a 126 to go in the overtime, 70-70 tie. Fort Yates, Eagle Staff to Tony Bob. Bob to Red Tomahawk. Bob, minute 10 to go. Red Tomahawk to Tony Bob. Red Tomahawk, Goudreau, Archambault. Goudreau, Goudreau's shot, 
No good. Way off the mark. Minot has it. They got a man open. It's Luther. The layup. Minot's a hit. 72-70. Luther scores. 45 seconds to go. Port Yates back now. Inside. Archambo is fouled. Cedarstrom. Well, I'll tell you something. Any way you look at it, these two teams have been great tonight. Again, we talk about ending in a tie. You know it can't. Archambo. He got it. It's 72 71 minor. It's tied up again. We're in the overtime, 38 seconds ago. Can Minot do it again? Ames comes across the line. Minot in white, four gates in blue. We're in overtime, tied at 72. For the bucket, Luther. Four gates gets it. With 19 seconds to go, they want a timeout. We'll keep it here. We got Barb Scar sitting up here. Uh, old college basketball coaches never go through this, do they? Hey, my heart's pounding so fast. Don't ask me anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I want you, yeah, when no. I want you, Scar, you can't come through. Really, isn't isn't this feeling? something? It really is. This is a tremendous uh, wind-up to a great state tournament. I've never seen so many tight games as we've seen this whole session. Yeah, it reminds us of the '71 tournament, Marv, when Wayne Whitty threw it in against Jamestown. But how about that shot for uh, Wyman Archambo? with two seconds to go in regulation. Unbelievable, he had three men hanging on him. I'm sure the people saw that and he still got it up. He got it off the board and he got it in. I don't know if he was shooting for the board or not, Jim, but he sure is happy it hit right where it did. When I get a coach like this, I like to put him on the spot. All right, 48 has the ball. What is Mr. Swisher telling his kids now? They got it about uh, midcourt and they're gonna start moving down and it's tied. They're gonna hold it for one, I'm sure. Uh, they take nothing but a good percentage shot. Get it inside if at all possible, draw a foul, but don't take it too soon. At least that's, I'm, I'm hoping is what he says. I, I really, I don't, certainly don't care who wins. I hope the, I know somebody's gonna win. I don't wanna get in the jackpot that way, but it's so thrilling and what a tremendous comeback. Okay, Marv, thanks a lot. Stick here, who knows? We may put you doing the play-by-play -play before it's over. 12 seconds to go, Four Gates waiting for the last possible shot. Red Tomahawk. Here it is, three seconds, it's up, it's no good. Whoop, a foul, uh oh! Eagle Staff foul Woody going for the ball. Regulation time is out and here is Mr. Clutch again. Wayne Witte with it on the line. He won the game against Fargo North, he won it against Jamestown two years ago, he's got it there again, Marv. Oh, golly. Well, he's a tremendous performer. He's proven it ever since his sophomore year. Here it is. Oh my heavens. I wouldn't believe it. He didn't hit the basket or anything. Tremendous pressure. Double overtime. Tremendous pressure. And what a tremendous performance by both these teams, regardless of how this comes out. It's got to be one of the most thrilling moments in sports that I have experienced here in the last 12 years in North Dakota. And you folks in Minnesota, I hope you're having a good time. And in South Dakota and Winnipeg, wherever you're watching this game, when you put young kids on the floor like this, you really got something going. Why not now starts the second overtime. 72-72. Luther. Cedarstrom. Ames. Rebound, Woody. Hey, he's back in the ball game. He was fouled by Archambo, and he gets the bucket. Witty gets his eighth point. Archambo, his second foul. And did you say Witty, that basket didn't count? Yes, it did. Would you say that he wanted that one? He certainly was going to make sure he made up for missing that free throw. He missed another free throw. Jump ball. Gary Cedarstrom tied up Goudreau. These young guys have to be tired. 74-72, Minot in the second overtime. 2.39 to go in the overtime. Minot has the ball. This is Michelonis. Cedarstrom, Michelonis. Ball stolen by Archambo. Tony Bob, his shot. Good, tied up. 
Tony Bob ties it up. I think somebody forgot to tell these kids there was supposed to be an end to this game. <laughs> 2 11 to go in the overtime. We're tied at 74. This is number two overtime. They'll talk about this one a long time. Oh, what a shot that Archambault made to tie it up in regulation. Minot with the ball. We're tied. Cedarstrom. Gives back out to Ames. A minute 48 to go in the second overtime. Minot and Ford Yates. Minot and White. They have the ball. We're tied. Second overtime. Michelonis. Luther. Going to pop from the corner. Forced it. Ford Yates has the ball. Minute and a half to go. Ford Yates has it now. People are standing all over this ballpark. 124 to go. Ford Yates now with a chance to win it. Second overtime, 74-74. Eagle Staff, short. Rebound, Witte. Oh, did he go get that ball. Goudreau was all over him, too. 110 to go in the game. Tied at 74. Second overtime. <laughs> Minot wants timeout, and they take it. 56 seconds to go. We'll keep it here. 74-74. Second overtime, 56 seconds to go. Well, Marv, you coached high school basketball, Grand Fork Central, for what, 12 years, 15 years? years up there. Right. How many of these kind of games did you go through? Well, we went through a couple overtime games. We never went one in the final of the state, but I can remember in the state tournament and tremendous pressure-packed games. But I think the most excited people are, are the spectators. I don't think the coaches are excited at all. I think uh, they're so busy working on strategy and trying to get the job done that really this is they perform just as well if it's if it's not overtime they're doing the same thing why did Nick call time up well he wants to uh, say look we've got the ball we've got a tie we're going to just take a good shot let's not force it up there I think maybe the last shot they went up was a little bit deeper than he wanted it to go but uh, they don't have to shoot they don't have to shoot until two three seconds and the least they can get out of it is another overtime <laughs> so I think that uh, they're going to keep trying to score. You know, you, you, it's hard to sit in the ball in this day and age with one minute. And, and I think it's doubly hard to try to sit in the ball against the Fort Yate Indians because they're the scrappiest bunch of kids I just have ever seen. What a comeback. They were out of it twice. Well, how far were they behind? Nine, ten points and about yeah. a minute to go or two uh, minutes? About two minutes ago, they were about eight out. Yeah. And everybody had said, well, she's over. We got a new state champion, but they're back in it. And Minot controls the ball now with 52 seconds to go in the second overtime for the championship of Class A basketball from the Bismarck Civic Center. Jim Adelson, Tom Woodmancy, and Marv Scar now added to our team. I don't know where Woodmancy went. He went down for the interview of the, of the Minot team, but Fort Yates didn't pay any attention to that. And they tied it up with two seconds to go and set it into two overtimes here. 31 seconds to go. Michelonis, Cedarstrom, Ames, he had the shot. Apparently Minot is going for the good, the last good shot. Nicolonis, Cedarstrom, Archambault and uh, Whittier having a real battle under the boards. Minot wants another timeout. 13 seconds to go. I'll tell you one thing, Nick Olson in all his years at Minot is doing his uh, work in overtime. And so is uh, young Mr. Clark Swisher. Two fine young coaches. The All-State, <clears throat> the All-Tournament team, this is not the All-State team, Selected by the broadcasters and writers, Wayne Whitty of Minot, Mark Luther of Minot, Wyman Archambault, Fort Yates, Darrell Eagle Staff, Fort Yates, Larry Swanson of Fargo North, Kelly Moocher of Langdon, Don Huffelt of Williston, Tim Evenson of St. Mary's, Steve McDonald of St. Mary's, and Kirby Skoog of Wapiton. On the team, one, two, three juniors, Luther, Skoog, and Moocher. And that, of course, is uh, the all-tournament team. Well, we're back to 13 seconds of this ball game in the second overtime. If somebody went out for coffee and said, well, that was over, might not won it uh, about 10 minutes ago. You got a second guess coming. Might not has a position now. See what they can do with it. One shot left. Who's going to take it? Eight seconds. Six. 
three. They better hurry. Here it is. Ames doesn't get it. Three overtimes. We'll go to our third overtime. We'll be back in a minute. Minot and Fort Yates as Mark Luther gets the tip for Minot High. This will go down as one of the all-time classics in North Dakota high school basketball. We're in triple overtime. Luther, Michelonis. How about those kids? That, what a tremendous pressure. Cedarstrom, Ames. They really got uh, Witty boxed up down there underneath. And they want to go to him, but they can't. Now here's Luther, his shot up. It is no good. Tap, no good. Fort Yates comes out with the ball. And the Warriors have it. 74-74, Fort Yates in blue. They're controlling in the third overtime. Red Tomahawk to Tony Bob. Almost threw it away. Red Tomahawk, good! Red Tomahawk has six points. Fort Yates in a full court press. Look out! It's knocked out of bounds. Fort Yates will control, and now this puts them in a pretty good spot, Mark. Well, I'm sure they're going to sit on that ball a little bit and look for a good one, but uh, they don't play that kind of ball, so let's see what they do. Well, they could conceivably make Minot come out and foul, too. I think that's their strategy. They're not going to go for the shot. They're leading by two. They have possession. We have a minute 46, and it looks like Fort Yates is going to make Minot come out and get them. That would be the strategy. See, they're not taking the shot. 76, 74. Minot's going to have to foul here. Fort Yates now in the old catbird seat. The Warriors. Oh, what a game. We're in a third overtime. Fort Yates. This is Red Tomahawk. A minute 17. The clock is ticking away. Minot's going to have to foul. Red Tomahawk. Right out of the old backyard. Minute eight to go. Goudreau has it. Red Tomahawk running around out there. This is Tony Bob. A minute to go in the game. In the third overtime. They clear it off. Goudreau. Archambo. Ford Yates is stalling it away. Almost stole it. Red Tomahawk has his triple team, but Eagle Staff has it. 49 seconds ago. Ford Yates leading by two in the third overtime. And a foul. They had to do it. Jim, one thing I want to point out, how excellently coached these two ball clubs are. They're doing everything that you just imagined them to do, and they do it well. I tell you, this is a great wind-up to a great state tournament. All right. Uh, thanks, Barb. Eagle Staff at the line. Free throw could just about uh, put him in good shape. He got it! Oh, boy! Time out, Fort Yates. We'll keep it here. I can't believe that we would wind up this way. Especially when the score was 16 to two early in the ball game. Everybody 12 to nothing. <laughs> right. Well, and then uh, I, I I can't go back that quick, but maybe Jack Lynch or one of you guys. It was uh, mine. I was ahead about 11 at one point in that fourth quarter, and then they uh, 48s cut it down to eight, and it was four, and then with two seconds ago. Wyman Archambo threw one in from the locker room with two guys hanging on him to tie it up and send it in overtime. And we are now in the third overtime with 48 leading 77 to 74. And if you're watching around the state, we hope you've had as much fun as we have. It's just been fantastic. And for the first time in color, the Bismarck Civic Center is going to explode when this game is over. I bet the temperature's up to 190. What a game. My old pal Russ Smith standing up here. From Minot. Rusty, they didn't play him like this uh, years ago, did they? Huh? Did they play him like this years ago? I wasn't around years ago, Jim. That's what you say. Eagle Staff. He got it! Eagle Staff has put Fort Yates out in front by four points with 37 seconds to go. Triple overtime and Fort Yates out in front. Minot's got to do something. They got to shoot. 
Cedarstrom nails it. All right, Cedarstrom puts Minot just two points down. Now Four Gates, 20 seconds to go. 78-76, Four Gates leading. They almost threw it away. Eagle Staff with 14 seconds to go. Tony Bob with 12 seconds to go. Four Gates is close to winning. Eight seconds, seven seconds, five seconds. Oh, and Luther. Luther really decked Red Tomahawk, and uh, Clark Swisher thought it should be a technical foul, and he almost got one himself. The boy is all right. We have four seconds to go. Fort Yates is leading 78 to 76, and I think that maybe we're going to have an end to this thing. A timeout is taken by Fort Yates. They're down there looking things over, talking things over. They're okay. The boy who was uh, Red Tomahawk, I think, went down, but he's okay. Luther had to foul. 78 76. Cedarstrom brought the Minot Magicians back to within two, but now Fort Yates with two points in front and the clock on their side. Four seconds to go. What a game. I think a significant thing here is that he will have two shots. He won't have just a one and one. It's a flagrant foul. That's right, and, and uh, he'll be shooting two, and even if he missed the first and made the second, uh, they're in pretty good shape because then they could just uh, let him bring the ball down and let him score and time will run out. Yeah, I would say that Ford Yates is in very good shape right here. What a turn of events. The Fort Yates Warriors, the comeback kids of Class A basketball this year. They were down 12 to nothing. They were down 11 points with some uh, eight minutes or six minutes to go in a game. And here now is Tony Bob who was the guy that was fouled. His free throw, no good. Well, it was done before by Archambault. It could be done by Minot. We're in a third overtime. Oh, Tony Bob has locked the door on Minot. 79 to 76. Now, Marv Scar just brought up a, a, an interesting thing here that we'll probably see. Minot will go down for a shot and 48 will let him take it. Right, they'll just stand back and let him go in the score and by the time the ball is picked up, I'm sure the game will be over. Although, Minot could score and conceivably still call timeout, but all that would do is maybe, uh, well, give him a chance to intercept the pass in and get it in and anything can happen as we found out tonight, Jim. How about that shot that that Archambault? I'll remember that for years because <laughs> really, he had three people hanging on him. It was just a, uh, he just overcame defense with great desire. He jumped higher than he's probably ever jumped before. He got up over them. I hope that uh, maybe you'll be able to replay this back. I don't know. You can't do it. Well, that's I don't know. Uh, we may have taped it down in uh, either in Bismarck or in Fargo. I hope we have. We'll have to wait and see. Everybody on its everybody on their feet now. And Minot will bring it in with four seconds to go in the game. Four seconds to go in the game. victory over a gallant Minot team that led all the way until the last couple of minutes. And then Archambault, <laughs> Archambault came through with his heroics, a classic 15 to 20 foot jump shot with three on him. Look at Clark Swisher up on the shoulders of his boys. Three overtimes. And they're going to make the presentation now. Let's stick with that and hopefully we get a brief interview. The winning coach. Isn't that something? Oh, the war hoops are out tonight. There were eight points ahead with 54 seconds to go. Eight points ahead with 54 seconds to go. Jerry Armstrong's down there now making some award. 
or the Pep and Spirit Award. And I'll tell you what, I watched these young people and their parents perform for three days, and they were outstanding. They made everybody look kind of bad. Williston High School. Williston High School with Spirit Award. There they are. It's going to be a fun time of week tonight. Oh, wow. Good thing the bars close at midnight. <laughs> Who listens to the law on a night like that? That's the doctor. I guess we're okay now. We had a, another audio coming in. I think they were trying to play it, give us a replay. Well, we're going to try and get this uh, through as quickly as possible. I don't know if Tom. First of all, before we present the award, there are some thanks that we'd like to pass out. It takes a great effort from the Department of Community. This is Mr. Buckethorn, uh, who's giving a, a last minute uh, commanding the Civic Center crew and everybody else. Fort Yates scored eight points in 54 seconds to tie the game. Minot was ahead by eight with 54 seconds left, and Fort Yates came back to win it in three overtimes. Can you imagine the heart of this team? All right, we're bringing our camera on the floor up a little closer. And uh, it's incredible. There's Mr. Muckenhurn down there now. Marv, incredible that they can score eight points in 54 seconds and go into overtime. It's a tribute to their press, and you know, they had a tough press all night, but in that last minute, that press was a complete swarming type of press that we used to see Fort Yates uh, play maybe five, six years ago. And then as you heard Coach uh, Swisher say, he, he got to into a more disciplined type uh, game with these kids, but when they had to do it, they went back to that uh, just do anything to do to get the ball, and they did it beautifully. And then once they stole it, they had to pass it to the open man and score, and they did. What, what, a, what a credit to a fine team. But, Another good team that really, well, of course, the Williston cheerleaders, they won the award. But listen, that Williston basketball team was great, too. They had a bad opening game, which cost them a real shot at the championship. But the last two games they played yesterday and today were just a magnificent performance. Fargo North getting their trophies. Uh, St. Mary's just got theirs. I have a special time to this one to Captain. Well, more. These are participation trophies. And Laramore uh, played well in this tournament. They had a bad first round. But there are the boys getting their awards. Unbelievable win for Fort Yates. In case you went away, because you got discouraged uh, if you were a Fort Yates fan. St. Mary just got its trophy. Williston. Williston was a consolation winner. Langdon fourth place. I don't really know what they're doing. I guess they're giving their participation basketballs. There's Williston.
They got everybody over there close by now. The award for the second play of the game, Silver Basketball, the Minot Captains. Minot Captains for second place. Silver Basketballs. Looking at the point total. Um, Here's four gates for the gold basketballs. Michelonis was the, look, Minot had four guys at double figures. Michelonis with 18, Luther with 14, Trainer names with 16. And there's the Tom Tom feet, they're going to beat tonight, I'll tell you. They're going to have some kind of powwow. Four gates, they're number one. In three overtimes. Consolation championship goes to Williston, 77 to 61. 7, 9, 11, 13, 15 for Archambo with his super shot to tie the ball game up. Fourth place, the Langdon Cardinals. And they uh, will be heard from again. The Fargo North Spartans got third place. Second place last year, third place this year. Look at this Daryl Eaglestaff, 18, 19, 21, 23, 25, 27 points for Eaglestaff. Less of the 48s now. Minot Magicians. The Nets are down. Hopefully we're going to get the... Uh... <laughs> There's the Minot bunch. They played so well. It's just like having something take, having, a, having your wallet taken out of your pocket, Marv, right in the middle of uh, the afternoon. That's right. You get home and you say, gee, it was a beautiful day. I had a great day. And reach for your wall and it's gone. Here's Fort Yates, the number one team in Class A basketball with a fantastic performance tonight. Look at that. All right. They deserved it. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Fort Yates, the number one team. I don't know if uh, we're going to get... Uh, Is Tom going to get him down there or not? I'm not sure. Excuse me, Russ. I'm not sure. Clark Swisher's walking over toward Tom Woodmancy. Tom, just a quickie. He's got the nets for him. Uh, while Tom, we're just going to... About three minutes, pal. Two minutes. Very short. Okay. <laughs> we got to get the network off here, but uh, while Tom is getting assembled, he's down there with a happy Clark Swisher. So without further ado, Tom, you got it. Talk, baby. Oh. All right, here we are. Clark Swisher, here's the nets from the <laughs> from the baskets. A well-deserved victory. Those kids never quit the whole oh. night. You were down 14 to nothing. And we were, we wanted a timeout. We asked him, fellas, you're going to score, you're going to run me with a shutout this year. Say, you know something, uh, you, you, you made a liar out of me. I thought you were going to wear the same outfit that you wore the first two nights. I did. Oh, you did, huh? Sure. Come on in Here's here, Here's the fellas. fellas that did it. Right here. There he is. Wyman Archambault. Two seconds to go in the ball game. Regulation time, and you hit a jump shot. Were you nervous? No, That's, uh, not really. I couldn't get nervous that time. You couldn't? Yeah. Depending on me, do you shoot it? Yeah, I have to shoot All right, it. what did you think? Which one of you had the foul? Was that you down here on Whitty in yeah. the last second? No. Yeah. That was Daryl. Daryl, just up for the rebound. Did you think he was going to make that shot with Wayne Whitty at the line? Yeah. So I just went after the rebound and hit, the, hit him. Like that. You hit him. Were you a little scared then? Yeah. Huh? you got to be a bunch of happy young men, don't you? Yes, we really are. <laughs> you know, you weren't even supposed to get into this tournament, were you? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's another. Roger Goodrow. You played uh, a couple years ago when you had that excellent ball club with Big Bob Eagle Staff and uh, Fred Lukens, and you didn't quite make it. You got upset. Stick around here, young fella. Come on in here. 
And you got upset uh, the first night. Uh, this had to be a big one for you. Sure was, right? I didn't think we could do it. You didn't? No, you guys it, never right. quit the whole night. No. What a Clark. Red Tomahawk made a shot in the last over. You know, so how about this fella right here? You know, when Kenny Walks, when you came in the ball game, you brought him from 14 points down, and you tied it up. You're just a sophomore, aren't you? Yes. Huh? Yeah. Are you going to be back here again next year? Yeah. You are, huh? Okay, congratulations, Kenny. We'll see you again. Tony, Come on in here. There's a kid that threw one on a one-on-five layup right there. Tony, Tony Bob. Bob. Tony? <laughs> nice job, Tony. He's the one that does it. One-on-five, he threw it in. No pressure. I had a little bit of pressure there. Huh? I was shook up when I was shooting last shot. <laughs> you were shook up? Yeah. Huh? I didn't look like it to me. I couldn't control myself. <laughs> Are you a junior, Tony? Yeah. And you're going to be back again next year? I hope so. Who are you going to have with you? Burl, Albert, Kenny. Everybody. Yeah. Okay, Tony, congrats. Er, uh, <laughs> I get all to Tony. All right, Tony. Thank you. Good job, Carl or Clark. I'm on. I'm on the day. Supposed to be All right, congratulations. We got to go back up to Jim and get out of here. Good luck, and you, oh, you he earned says, it. He says you can stay down here. Hey, Jim. Uh, <laughs> we're hit, <hitting>, baby. <laughs> One minute. Uh, you, anybody you want to thank in particular? Who do who who do you uh, think? Uh, Sherm Lawbach, Coach Lawbach. Have you talked to him yet? No, I haven't. Sherm. Come here, talk to him for a minute. Here's the guy that keeps me under control for five, you, six years. Are you the guy that? Are you the guy that keeps him under control? No, I don't think anyone can keep him under control. You know, I, I think he's. I, I talked to him the first night and said he was uh, 48's number one cheerleader. <laughs> he's a cheerleader, all right, but he's a hard worker. He deserves a lot more praise than what he has gotten, I think. You know, in my own uh, uh, opinion. And he's given. He's dedicated a lot of his time to the kids and. Uh, He's just a hard worker. It's, you can't say enough about him. Sometimes he gets difficult to work with, but because it's, you know, it's hard to work with the cheerleader. See? It, is, it is. Well, you ought to know you've been with him a long time. I've right. uh, been with him six years. We sure want to congratulate both of you, and we'll see you next year maybe, okay? Well, I hope so. Yeah, I now let's go back up to Jim. Okay. Oh, an emotional, excited guy, Clark Swisher. He's a great young fellow. I can remember a couple of years back in the 1971 tournament when he got knocked out. Uh, everybody thought Fort Davis was going to win it. As Clark said in our pregame uh, interview, we had all the studs then, all the studs. We came in here, we're going to win it. He said, and boom, Jamestown beat us. But this year, nobody was going to beat Clark Swisher and Fort Yates. Would you believe they came with 54 seconds to go? They scored eight points to tie it up. A marvelous three overtime, 79 to 78 win. The leading scorer was Darrell Eagle Staff for 48 with 27 points. The big hero, there were many of them. Archambo Wyman with that clutch shot. He got 15 for the night. And the biggest one he'll ever have in his life is when he banked one in from 16, 18 feet to tie the game with two seconds left. I said at that time, a miracle would do it. A miracle did it. And Fort Yates, the miracle team, is the 1973 Class A basketball champions. It seemed like, as we mentioned a moment ago, Minot walking down the street had their pocket picked by these gallant young warriors from Fort Yates. Fantastic finish to a great basketball season in Class A. And we're coming back with you next week for the Class B basketball tournament, and that's going to be a great one, too. There's some fine teams in that one. Well, we could thank a million people here tonight. Uh, everybody here in Bismarck has been so great to our crew. But for Wally Morkin, who did an outstanding job putting this thing together with the help of 